Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we're up here on the workshop roof and we're gonna be removing these 12 solar panels right here. These are the oldest solar panels I have. We're gonna repurpose those onto some ground mounts later, but we're gonna replace these with some new N-type solar cells. And they are, um, so the technology there is, it's more efficient, so the panel is actually smaller per watt, and you know, for how many watts it is. So this array right here is 12 panels, 3,620 watts. We're gonna replace it with only 10 panels. We're gonna have 4,500 watts, almost a 1,000 watt gain. And the new panels are gonna take up less space when it's done. So all the solar panels I have up here now are monocrystalline perk style solar cells. That's pretty common for people to have those. And one way to tell the age of the panel or the age of the technology that made the panel is how many bus bars it has. So when we look at these panels, 315 watt panels, there's only five bus bars on here. So that's pretty, that's, that's pretty old technology. They've been making them with five bus bars for five, 10 years probably. So this is, this is definitely older, uh, at least an older style manufacturing process. Now these panels right here, we count up the bus bars on there. They're nine bus bars per cell. These have been pretty common for the last two or three years. And then down here, my newest panels. See, I put all these up last year, and if you count them, there's actually 10 bus bars per solar cell. And, and all that's doing is really telling uh, kind of the age, uh, or the age of the manufacturing technology that made them. And it's not that they don't perform, they all actually do perform really well. But I just wanna see if I can squeeze some more watts out of this roof and using those n type solar panels we're going to squeeze more wattage in a in a smaller spot so that solar array is hooked to the 12k pv right now and since it's on a roof it has the rapid shutdown modules on it and what that does is it only allows the solar panel to really output voltage if it gets a signal from the inverter or from the shutdown module that's actually mounted inside of here so right now the operating voltage 358 volts. That's another reason why I want to swap out these panels is they are higher voltage, lower amperage. And then in the winter time when it gets cold, voltage goes up. This array gets close to 480 volts, which is kind of pushing the max of some of these inverters that I test. So if I just turn off the PV disconnect, it's going to interrupt that rapid shutdown signal. So all those panels should shut down and then they'll put out a really small voltage, but you can see now that array is, is 4.47 volts. Um, so it's safe voltage um, to be able to work on. So to get the solar panels up and down off of the roof, luckily I have a tractor that I can put up here and I can get it fairly close or at least close enough for me to unload and offload solar panels. In the last video, I didn't show my anchor, but right here's the anchor point on the roof. Just clip my rope onto it. So I believe when I put these panels on, I put them on from right to left. So I'm gonna take them off in the same way. They should unwire easier. All right, I got the first solar panel removed and I had forgotten that the shutdown modules on this array, they're, they're dual shutdown modules. So it's one shutdown module, wires to two solar panels. And in my opinion, that makes things a little bit more difficult wiring up here on the roof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that um, shutdown module, I'm gonna pull it off of the solar panel and then we'll disconnect it from each solar panel and just take the solar panels down and we'll leave all of the dual shutdown modules wired together on the roof. We're just gonna leave them up here. So if you have the single shutdown modules, 
you can go ahead and mount those to the solar panels, pre-wire them to the solar panels, have all your uh, wiring management, like your clips on there, holding the wires in place. Everything can be all set up on the ground. And then when you get up here, you just have to lay the solar panel down and then plug it into the next one and keep laying them down and keep mounting each one of them. I think it just goes smoother with the single modules. And that's what I ended up doing on this last set here. It costs a little bit, like, I don't know, it may cost another $10 per panel, but to minimize the work on the roof, I think it's worth it. All right, I got all 12 solar panels off the roof and on a pallet, and we're just gonna use those later in some future projects. So this pallet right here, this is the 10 450 watt solar panels that we're gonna put on the roof. They are packed like vertically on this pallet, so it's they're a little tricky to unpack and not have any fall over and, and get smashed on the ground. So I'm gonna have my wife come out and help me. We'll get these on the pallet forks. This is the last one. Go ahead. So the solar panels I took down, these are Canadian solar solar panels. And the ones we're gonna put up are also made by Canadian solar as well. These are their Topcon panels. At least that's the name they put on their N-type solar panels that they're making right now. So the main difference between the older Perk style cell and the N-type solar cell, one is efficiency. This one is about three more 3% more efficient than the other one. That means it can make more wattage in a smaller area. And it's also less affected by temperature. So in the heat of the summer, you have less wattage loss with these panels than you would the other. These older panels only had a 10 year warranty on the workmanship and materials. This panel has a 25 year warranty on workmanship and material. And then it was also assembled in the USA with imported parts. And if we look at the cells on here, it'd be hard to count, but there is 16 bus bars per cell. So I bought these Topcon panels at Signature Solar. That's where I've bought all of my residential panels. They do seem to have pretty good deals on solar panels. The only trick is you have to buy 10 of them. And if you're interested in these, I'll leave a link in the description below.
So these new solar panels are about two inches taller than the 390 watt ones beside them. So I'm just gonna try to match up the center here as we go along. All right, I got everything mounted to the back of the solar panel. Right here is the rapid shutdown module. We are using some of these Heiko clips. They hold these wires in place. Here's some more of them holding the wires so everything's nice and neat. So on these solar panels, the leads come off in the middle of the panel. So I had to mount the shutdown module closest to it. So that way these leads will go over right in line with the cables on the other panel. So I couldn't mount it at the top of the solar panel how it was before. They just, they just didn't reach. I have to do it this way. Stay on there. All right, we got our 10 new solar panels up here and they look good. I do like the black painted solar panels, the black trim, all looks good on the roof. Looks way better than those do. So these new solar panels, they are taller and wider since they are 450 watts. They're quite a bit larger solar panel than what we took off here. So we just replaced 12 panels with 10 panels and we have some rails sticking out here. So before the solar panel ended, like right here, there was only about maybe an inch and a half, two inches of rail sticking out. Now we've got about a foot. So I think anytime you replace panels, they're not gonna match up dimensionally. They're gonna lay out differently and you're gonna end up with a little bit of rail sticking out like that. And I think that's about as best as we could ask for. I don't particularly like the silver rail sticking out there that far, but it's on the side that hardly anybody sees anyway. So I don't think it's that big a deal. All right, it's 3.23 in the afternoon. We got it all done in one day. So let's go ahead, we'll get these wires back in. Hopefully they work and we'll see what the output is. All right, we're wired in. Turn on our disconnect. They should start powering up. So we're hooked up to PV input number two, 293 volts somewhere in there and 2.8 kilowatts of power. So the new solar array did power up. It is producing power, so I got everything wired up right. Shouldn't have been too hard because I left all those shutdown modules already all hooked up together to each other on the roof. All I had to do is basically plug in the solar panels into each one of those modules. So the 12K PV, it has all of these solar panels right here, which is 7,360 watts. Then it has our new 4,500 watt array. I believe that brings us up to 11,000 840 watts on the 12k PV and then these 20 solar panels right there they're 7800 watts there on the 6000 XP and that brings us up to 19,660 watts of solar up here on the workshop roof now if I can get these older panels all set up on a ground mount and get them hooked up that could bring me up to 23,420 watts of solar I think at that point in time, boy, if I'm not off grid at that point in time, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean, that's, I gotta be getting pretty close.